Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to their day. Uh, it's in the morning, I've got to run a quick errand uh, before my next uh, appointment. Appointment. So I'm doing that and I decided to go ahead and uh, t holler at you guys real quick. Um, as you know, we're in the middle of a fundraiser for uh, the work we're doing in with the organization and uh, specifically with Black Men Lead and uh, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. Um, I want to encourage you to show your love, show your support for the work we've been doing in the community for years now and we continue to do as the work is increasingly necessary. There's so much going on. One of the things I want to talk about today is the, ma the manner in which we failed uh, the, the current uh, young adult generation, uh, young adult black generation, and what it looks like for the future if we don't do something uh, to rectify uh, what is currently on deck. There is literally a growing number of, a growing number of black females specifically and it, it's it's horrifying to me actually it's a growing number of black females who are literally lost as to who they are and what they should expect or what they should demand from men i literally watched a video of a young black female who probably was under 25 could have been a little older and her sentiments were simple her sentiments were she can't stand a guy who does everything right, who has a job, who is on their, on their thing. It's just something about it she can't stand. And the thing is, it's not an, anom it's not an anomaly. That's the thing is, the, 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 what used to be considered a good man now is considered a simp or a trick or a mark and weak a woman it, these young girls in in growing numbers don't see the value in being treated properly don't see the value in a man with a plan a man with 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 uh, initiative a man with a purpose a man that is preparing himself to be able to take care of a family to effectively love a woman through his actions and not just his proclamations and that is scary it is really, really, truly scary. What did we go wrong? How did we, we didn't properly socialize. You know, I talk a lot about black men leading in, in, in the, uh, the Rite of Passage Initiative and the proper socialization of young black males, but there also has to be a socialization of females too. They must understand first and foremost who they are. They must understand what is expected of them, how they should carry themselves, how they should present themselves, what they should expect from themselves, and equally what they should demand and respect from from young black males young black males aren't being challenged to rise to the occasion they aren't being uh pushed you got a lot of guys who who have men in their lives that are holding them accountable but you got a lot of other guys that are going to hover right around what they have to do to get them a piece that's it that that they're only going to rise to the level they need to rise to to bed a woman or to call a woman his chick or his, you know, whatever. That, 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 that's, that's the level they're going to rise to. Women, you don't realize the power you have. You don't realize your value. But you're setting the bar so low that you're constantly getting trash. And you're not challenging anybody to step up to you correctly because you don't have a high expectation for yourself. Now, if you find some, and, and and the crazy thing is that it was a man that were, was asking this person that was, I guess, doing an impromptu interview of this young sister, and he was asking, but and so when she said it the first time, he said, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, well, say that again," and she repeated it, and unfortunately, I know too many young girls and this is not the same I know what you're thinking 
this isn't the same uh, good girls like bad boys thing. This isn't I want a thug because or a roughneck because even when MC Light was talking about getting a roughneck, she was talking about somebody that was on that game that was just raw around the edges, rough around the edges, tough, but on their game. This person said, I don't want anybody with a job. So if he ain't got some kind of sideways hustle going on, if he ain't screwing over or getting over or doing something bad, you know, if he ain't poisoning the people in the neighborhood uh, by selling drugs or he ain't got some kind of street hustle going on, he, he, he he's lame. So, you know, he's a, he's a lame. So that mindset leaves, you know, my whole thing is I ain't got nothing against, I ain't got nothing against the hustle. But your hustle should not harm anyone. Your hustle should not harm, especially the people in your community. And, and, and so, and the other thing is your hustle has to be a plan because the whole thing is you understand how this system works. Your hustle need to, needs to move into the area of legitimacy rather quickly. There has to be a plan, no matter what you're doing, of how you're going to move it into a legitimate plane so that you can take it the long distance and not end up caught up in this system. And when you don't have a proper plan, you don't need to be procreating. You don't need to be betting some man's daughter. You need to be working on your game. The problem is we are failing these girls by not preparing them. You know, thank God for the programs like the one my wife and I do with Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. We're, we're primarily dealing with a lot of trauma, but we're also setting a standard. We're also saying that it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter you know, the level at which you are starting this thing or what you went through or how bad you, what matters is what are you going to do about it? Where are you going afterwards? And, and, and that's the thing that really, man, when I sit down and I look at it, I'm going like, okay, we've got to do a better job of this. We need to take this mainstream. This needs to be extremely important because what you what you have to understand is, in the, same, in, 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 in the same way in the community that the absence of a man has left a void in preparing young black men, it's also left a void in the understanding and the identity and the self-awareness of a black woman in, 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 as a young black girl. She gets a great deal of who she is and her self-concept and self-image from dad. That's something about it that lands different when dad says you're beautiful versus mom. I mean, something as simple as that is that you're beautiful, that, you, that you're worthy, that you're capable. Those things carry more weight when dad says them. It just does. And so there has to be a presence in the lives of these babies that the presence itself sets the standard. In other words, that she's observing a man that knows how to treat a woman. She's observing a man that has a consistent income. You know, and, and the whole thing is, no, I, 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 you know, you should want to own something. You shouldn't want to work your entire life for something someone else owns and build their dream and build their vision, you know, you know and whatever. You should want to own something. Ownership is going to be a part of the power, uh, the power narrative, the power equation. So, yes, that needs to be, but it has to be someone who's definitely bringing in income to support their family. It needs to be someone who knows how to manage his emotions. It needs to be someone who knows how to talk to his wife and his children. It needs to be someone. We need this presence. And we need mothers to be on their A game as well, especially single mothers. You got to have a, a plan in, in, in effect. No, it's not fair if you're sitting there and you're trying to do this all by yourselves. It's not fair. But you got to have a plan because you can't do everything. Trying to carry the load of the weight of something that a man was designed to do is not only going to drain you and destroy you in the long haul, it's not going to be done at the level it needs to be done. You're going to do it the best you can. You can. Some of you have raised some unbelievably exceptional young women, but there's still gaps because you simply can't be everything. You weren't designed to. There's got to be a plan of how you're going to expose them to positive men who will serve to model what they should expect in young boys. It's so important. It's so important. We've got to do a better job of that. Look, I'm not going to be long. I'm 
finish out this errand, then I'm gonna get back and get, get, get these clients out the way. But I had to share this with you. Don't forget, support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. As I just showed you, it's so desperately needed. And stay tuned for more content. We're about to amp it up. We're about uh, to really get involved. There's so much going on. I have so much stuff that comes across my desk on a regular basis of people who need me to address things as well as people who need resources. Man, our kids are getting him. I got a young 15-year-old uh, kid now who is being held on a contempt of court charge for violating some kind of order. He's in, uh, he has no family. He's in the foster care system and he was being kept and guarded at some place in some kind of way. I don't know what's going on. We're trying to figure that out. Um, but uh, this is the kind of stuff that comes across my desk on a regular basis. And it needs attention. It needs someone to uh, address it. It needs someone to touch it. And as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to touch as much as I possibly can. Um, but I'm one person and my resources to do this are based primarily on me. Um, and for those of you who have given, don't think that I'm maligning or belittling what you're giving. I'm just saying based on what is needed, we're so far off and so far behind. And for years, I have financed 90 plus percent of what we've done, a very, in the high 90s, actually. And wifey has said, enough is enough. We are at that point now where we're building a future for our children and grandchildren. And you can't, we can't, we couldn't continue on that route. And she's right. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to back up, you know, that I'm going to stop. It just means that how it's sourced has to change. And so we're asking you for your support. Uh, on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. You guys have an unbelievable day, and I'll talk to you soon.